book postscript tag, not book postscript book tag. It's the book postscript tag. Hi guys, I'm Francesca. Welcome back to my channel for the book postscript tag. This tag was originally created by Adam over at Memento Mori. I will leave the link to his original tag in the description down below. I wasn't tagged by anybody, but I still really wanted to do this tag. Adam did such a great job to come up with these questions because I think that they give you the opportunity to talk about some books that are not necessarily going to be in your top 10 of the year or your worst books of the year and they allow you to reflect on your year as a reader. So let's do this. Question number one, the longest book you read and the book that took you the longest to finish. The longest book I read is either Lair of Dreams or Before the Devil Breaks You by Liba Bray. I listened to the audiobooks, so I'm not quite sure how long they were. The audiobooks were 20, 21 hours long, while the books should be around 600 pages each, so it's either one or the other. And the book that took me the longest to finish is a book that featured in my worst books of 2018 video, and that is Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I won't go into details as to why I didn't like this book. This is not the right space to do that, but I dedicated the whole month of August to this book and it felt like it kept going on and on and on. And it was like I was in a tunnel and I could not see the light at the end of it. Every time I turned the page, I still had another page in front of me and another and another and another and it was just so long and it took me so long to finish it. I just, I don't know if it's the book that took me the longest to read, but it's the book that it felt like it took me the longest to read. So, Americana. Question number two, a book you read in 2018 that was outside of your comfort zone. A book that was outside of my comfort zone is Skyward by Brandon Sanderson because this is sci-fi and I really hate sci-fi. It's just a genre that I don't go along with very well, but this was Brandon Sanderson so I just, I could not not read it. Even though it was sci-fi, I had to pick it up and I did this month. However, I haven't finished it yet because I left it at college and I didn't bring it with me at home. So I kind of read it in 2018. I didn't finish it, but I started it. Is that cheating? Does it count? I don't know. But just in case, another book that was out of my comfort zone was Life Before Us by Romain Guéry. And this is a French modern classic, kind of, I think. And I didn't like it. It was out of my comfort. I hated it. Actually, this is another book that features in my worst books of 2018. Wow. But it was out of my comfort zone for two reasons. It is set in the 60s, in the 70s, something like that. And that's a time period that I really don't like to read about. I don't know why. I just don't. And also, it's written by a French author. And again, I don't know why, but I still have to encounter the book written by a French author that I actually enjoy. Usually I hate French books. I don't know why, but I'm open to change my mind, okay? I'm open to discover the French author that I will enjoy. If you have a recommendation for a French book that you really enjoyed and that you think I might like, please let me know because honestly, I want to find it. I want to find that French book that I will enjoy, so let me know. Question number three, how many books did you reread in 2018? I reread only one book in 2018, which I don't like that, okay? I really don't, and this is something that I will address in my resolutions, bookish resolution, reading goals, whatever, for 2019, so I'll get to that, but I only reread one book. And question number four asks, what was your favorite reread of 2018? And I have to say that even if I had reread more books, this one would have been my favorite among the rereads anyway, because I just loved it too much. And it's one of my favorite books of all times. And it's a memoir. You guys might know what I'm talking about. It is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. This is about 
his life, his childhood in South Africa during apartheid. I would recommend this book to anybody, okay? I personally love Trevor Noah as a person, as a comedian, as a TV show host, as everything. I just love him, okay? I do. But if you don't like Trevor Noah, if you don't agree with him on a political level, you would still enjoy this book so much. He's a great narrator. It offers you a different perspective on apartheid as well, but on race and white privilege and how his childhood was. It's just an interesting book to read and if you can please listen to the audiobook because he speaks in Afrikaans and in other African dialects such as Kosa and Zulu and other dialects and he's just such a good narrator definitely recommend it. He can perform, okay? Question number five, a book that you read for the first time in 2018 that you look forward to reading in the future. I have to be honest, I haven't read many books that I would say I would love to read in the future, but if I had to pick one, I would go with Our Souls at Night by Kent Haworth, and not because it was a complex book, not because I think that I would gain something from a reread. I just think that this was one of those books that you read when you need a comfortable read, when you need something cozy, something melancholic, something that would give you peace in a way that would make you feel at home somehow, I guess. I don't know if it makes sense, but still. I think that someday I will want to read a book that would put me in that mind zone and when that day comes I will be rereading Our Souls at Night. Question number six. Favorite short story or novella that you read in 2018? I have two short stories that I would like to mention because they won't be in my best books of 2018 but I still wanted to talk about them and I will talk about them in my December wrap-up now that I think about it because I read both of them this month. I won't go into details because I'll do that in my wrap-up but still I want to mention them both. The first one is A Faraway Smell of Lemon by Rachel Joyce and the second one is Crooner by Kazuo Ishiguro. Both short stories deserve a spot here because both of them I think had everything a short story should have. They focused on one moment, okay, one instant in the lifetime of the main characters. You get some flashbacks, you get glimpses of what their future might be, and with both these short stories, you get exactly what you need. You're not left wanting more, and you haven't been given too much information. It was just the right amount with the right sentiment and they were just perfect. Question number seven, Mass Appeal, a book you liked and would recommend to a wide variety of people. For this one, I'm gonna go with a book that I haven't mentioned at all this year, right? Um, the Arrival by Sean Tan, because I think that anyone would enjoy this book. It is quite short. It is a silent graphic novel so there are no words, no problems might arise with the writing style because there's no writing. Uh, the art in it is absolutely beautiful. It is a sepia kind of um, color drawing thing. I don't know how to talk about art, as you can tell. Most importantly though, this graphic novel focuses on immigration, on empathy on what happens when different cultures collide and at this time and point in history I think that this is something that people should read because it doesn't hurt and people might learn something from it so I would give this book to anybody like I would force it into their hands because it needs to be read. Question number eight Specialized Appeal, a book you liked but would be hesitant to recommend to just anyone. As of right now, as I'm filming this, I still haven't finished this book, but I know that it's the right pick for this question. And I also know for certain that this book is so going to be in my best books of 2018 video because 
I am just loving not every sentence, but every word of it. Like it's crazy, but I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. And here's why. Okay, so the book in question is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. This book, it has one of the most, if not the most, beautiful writing styles that I've ever encountered in my whole life. It is the kind of writing style that, even when it doesn't say anything particular, you know, anything deep or profound or enlightening or whatever, I still want to underline every goddamn sentence because it is just so beautiful, so poetic, so elegant, so mesmerizing. It is just incredible. And that is precisely why I wouldn't recommend it to just anybody because this more of a character-driven book instead of a plot-driven book, not much happens and it is very slow, like very slow. Uh, there was a part where the main character, who is a butler, had to discuss something with his employer. He had to choose the right time to do so in order to have a positive response. And so he went on for two pages or even more than that, reflecting on when it was the right time to ask his employer this question. Two pages on basically nothing. But I loved those two pages. I love them. And there's another part where for like eight or nine pages or something like that, he reflects on the concept of dignity. And I love that. Every single sentence, but nine pages on dignity, not everyone would love that, but those who would love that kind of thing would adore this book. So I would recommend it, but not just to anyone. Question number nine, reflect on your year as a bookish content creator. I cannot really reflect on my year as a bookish content creator since I have been doing this more consistently and in English only for the last couple of months, but these two months have been incredible. I finally feel like I'm part of a community and that feels great. I started engaging more on conversation and stuff with other booktubers and in the comments and I'm finally making some friends and I've met some incredible people and I hope to get to know them better um, in 2019 and that's also part of my resolutions for 2018 so I'll get back to this, but I did Vlogmas and I had no idea what I was getting into, but I did think that I wouldn't have made it past day three or day four and I nailed it. I did Vlogmas for all 25 days, 25 days out of 25 days, and I, I just, I didn't think it was possible, but I did it. And having done that, I can say with certainty that I have great plans for 2019 that I will upload regularly and more consistently in 2019 and that I'll do my best to be even more a part of this community. I love it so, so much and I'm so grateful to my fellow booktubers as well as all the people that are subscribed to my channel and even those who are not subscribed but just happen to watch my videos from time to time. Last but not least, question number 10. Tag some fellow bookish content creators. I want to tag Anya from Anya's Bell Jar. I want to tag Vanessa from Split Reads. I want to tag Eva from Fred Weasley Died Laughing. I want to tag um, Monique from Monique Studio and Andrea from um, Infinite Text. And I tag them because I would love to see 
an overview, I guess, of their year as readers. So girls, I hope you'll do this tag. And this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you would like to do this tag and I haven't tagged you, feel free to do so and let me know in the comments if you do it so I can come and check your video out. And before going, I would once again like to thank you for being subscribed, thank you for watching my videos, thank you for being a part of my life, thank you for making my journey on booktube so incredible and so much fun and such an opportunity and I just love you guys so so much. Every comment that I read puts a huge smile on my face. The reason why I'm here, the reason why I'm still doing this is you. <laughs> So thank you so much and I'll see you next year. It feels so good to say that, but yeah, I'll see you next year. Warm hugs.